Peace, family. Peace, 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 peace. All right. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Dina Bryant. I do these inspirational videos just talking about life, talking about the paradigm, the habits that we tend to do on a day in, day out basis, talking about the laws of the universe, energy, vibration, frequency, um, you know, things like that. So in today's video, I wanted to do a video about how I love someone more than I love myself. So I think a lot of times we say that, you know, I love I love you more than I love myself. And I always thought that was a good thing. I always thought it was a good thing for a guy to love me more than he loves himself, right? And doing the work on myself and being aware of the things that I tend to do, I now look back and say that is the most foolish thing um, I could have ever do what I could have done, right? Because the truth of the matter is, there's no way you could love someone more than you love yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, how could you love somebody more than you? And also, love to me means acceptance, right? You accept the person exactly for who they are. You accept them, you know, for whenever they are um, frustrated you accept them whenever you know they're going through things and probably have a little anger not anger to the point where so I need a oops upside your damn head now not that type of anger okay um but you love them past those things and I've never been in a relationship with so I loved anyone past their flaws or loved them past you know um them being themselves like I always love some somebody or you know a guy for them looking a certain way right it was conditioned love it wasn't even real love right and so I'm gonna give you guys this I'm gonna tell you guys this story you know the lesson I got from it from the story so it all started my oldest sister had introduced me to um this guy named Bruce right and Bruce, um, he was very nice looking, handsome. Ooh, wee, handsome, low haircut, honey. He was fine, finer than wine, honey. Honey, come up with that, with that picture, right? Imag imagination, get, get, that, get into your imagination, honey, right? He was finer than wine, and Back in my heyday, so it's like 1998, I'm 14 years old, no one ever, you know, showed me, because people talk, the adults would, would talk, right, and you know, as a child, you paying attention more so what you see as opposed to what they tell you, so I never seen a relationship where so it was healthy, it was, um, you know, a successful relationship I, I didn't see that I didn't grow up seeing it witnessing it and so me um getting you know to meet Bruce and stuff like that he was older but he thought that I was older because I lied about my age and at that time I was in an all-girls home because when I was 12 years old I was selling drugs um you know living with my father selling drugs and just wanted fast money. I mean, that, that sums it up. Wanted fast money. And I had wound up going to an all-girls home because my father had passed away when I was in the youth house. And so while I was in an all-girls home, my family, they was like, nope, we ain't taking her because, you know, she is selling drugs, whatever she, you know, we don't know who she affiliated with. I'm thinking that's what they felt, right? And so... My brother and sister from my father's side, their mother and her husband decided that they would, you know, get custody of me. And so, all of that is going on. Um, and so I meet Bruce, right? And he was just like everything. Um, I, I just was like so madly in love. I was, I was 14 years old. And I was just like really, really madly in love and I remember 
I remember I would come home to my brother and sister, my day house. I would come home on Fridays and it would be furloughs, right? So furloughs means if you like incarcerated or if you like any in any government um, institution, right? Furloughs means like you could come home on the weekends, right? Or you could come home like you have the permission from either the program or the judge or whatever it was. And so Bruce was like my first illusionary true love, right? Like he was like my first person that I was like, whoa, I felt head over heels for him. And the reason being was because he reminded me so much of my father, right? When it came to being like rebelling, right? Rebelling against the Lord. He was an abuser, like how my father would abuse women. He wasn't like that, um, but he was, you know, a nice looking guy and he was very rebellious. So going through all of that, um, he just was, he was, he was like my kryptonite, okay? He was, he was really it. He was really my kryptonite. And I remember his backstory, like... I had heard, you know, all through his life, mainly, he would be, he stayed in jail, always incarcerated, right? And since I was in institutionalized, like, I didn't mind. Like, I was like, you know, okay, I liked it, the bad boys, I liked it, the whole swag, I liked it, you know, I liked it all over there, right? And so I remember this, um one particular day. So Bruce had this thing where so whenever I would call him, it would be days like he would disappear. Here I am, I'm still in high school. He don't go to school. He, you know, he's an older guy, older, probably had me about 10 years or so. And um, so, and this was this was like considered normal, right? Because a lot of the women um, that was, uh, who dated, they always, a lot of them dated older men, right? And so this was considered like, you know, normal, whatever. And so Bruce had this thing where, so he would always be like missing in action at times. I call him, he's unavailable. He don't answer his cell phone and you can't, you can't reach him. You don't know where the hell he at, right? And I remember this one particular day, I had this older friend who had a car, a male friend. And I was telling him, I was like, you know, when I contact Bruce, I can't find him. I don't know where he be at, whatever. And it was like, my intuition was like, girl, he is messing around. But you know, when you young like that, you don't want to hear that, right? <laughs> you want to think you the one and only, honey. There's many, okay? It's, it's many at times, okay? Especially if you don't know your self worth, um, like you are, you just gonna be accepting it because you think that you can't get no better. And so what happened was this friend had brought me to Bruce's house, right? And I'm calling Bruce on the cell phone. He's not answering. I goes, um, I'm knocking on Bruce's mother's house, her apartment door, and no one is answering. So I'm like. How is he? Like, where is he? So, you know, like when you feel that, that anger and you like something is telling you like you're about to see something. You got these butterflies going on in your stomach. You you know it's something you about to run into something, right? And so I go downstairs. And I see Bruce's brother, and I'm like, where your brother? And he's like, oh, I don't even know, Dina. I'm like, all right, whatever. So the girl who Bruce's brother was with, she was like, I know where Bruce is. And so she was like, come follow me. So we goes into Bruce's mother's, um, the apartment building. But we passed Bruce's door. So I'm like, where is she taking me? So we goes upstairs, and there's this girl named Catrice that lives upstairs. And I'm like, you know, I'm confused. Well, mom, I'm like, why is she bringing me here, right? So she knocks on the door, and Catrice is like, oh, and she's like, 
is me, Catrice. So Catrice opens the door, honey. And Catrice was a white girl, okay? Just, just putting that out there. She was a white girl. And I just seen black. I seen some, some red. Ooh, honey. Right? I, honey, I was pissed. So when Catrice opens the door, Bruce is laying on Catrice's bed with some boxers. I was just hot. So when Bruce comes out, um, I had like this little pocket knife. It was it was little, probably like a nail clipper thing. And I just was like, you know, like cutting them on his arm and stuff like that. Very toxic. The relationship was so toxic. And he had never put his hands on me. Um, but it just was toxic in so many ways. And I believe because we was two people looking for love. Like we had a deficit of self-love, loving ourselves. And so we was two people that was looking for love. And when the other person couldn't give it to them, we would react or whatever, we would act out. And whether it was him cheating or me finding out he cheating and then trying to do something to him, but it always was, you know, toxic. And I remember that same exact night, we went to the hotel and it was like, by the morning time, everything was good, right? Like I would throw it up in his face, but the truth of the matter was, I wasn't going nowhere. And the reason being was because I didn't think that I would get somebody better perception. I didn't think I would get somebody better. Um, I didn't want to be by myself. I was afraid. And this was like, th this guy, he was older. He, I guess, like, sort of mold me into, like, you know, into me being, like, you know, a certain type or whatever it was. And I just accepted it. And so, what lessons, and if it wasn't, so how did we break up? We broke up because he got incarcerated. And once he got incarcerated, it was like, that was it. But it was sad because it took for him to get incarcerated for me and him to break up. That's crazy, right? But that's just how my mindset was. And you can't do better if you don't know better, right? A lot of times you feel like, well, why you ain't do better? Well, the person ain't do better because they ain't know better. It's programming. It's your paradigm. It's the habits that you constantly do on a daily, daily basis. And the lessons that I learned from that. And at that time, I didn't learn any lessons because my next relationship, it was like that relationship, but it was abusive, right? Um, looking back now and observing, um, I was lost. Um, I wanted somebody to love me who couldn't love me because they didn't love themselves. And um, I went to things that was familiar to me, right? Things that um, I seen growing up. So it was familiar, so I, I accepted it. My purpose for doing this video is to say this. If you put people on a pedestal, they are going to make you a groupie. If you make them the main star, the main character of your movie, they are going to make you a groupie. A lot of times we do it is because sometimes we need it, right? Like maybe we've been through experience abandonment. Maybe our parents was there, but they wasn't there in a way like emotionally um, there for us, right? And so we start becoming needy. Like we need somebody to, the illusion, right? That they could be there for us. They could do certain things that our parents, um, we felt didn't do. But the, the truth of the matter is they was unable to do it because they didn't know, right? And so um, doing the work on myself and the purpose of this video is to say, you could never love anyone if you don't love yourself. And love doesn't necessarily mean, right? Like I'm not saying, well, 
look past him, you know, cheating on you or look past him beating on you or whatever it is. I'm not saying that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you accept the person for who they are and you decide if you want any parts of that. And if you want parts of it, then I guess you do what works for you. But if you can't accept them, oftentimes it's because you don't accept yourself. And that's why I could have never loved any of my exes because I didn't even love me. I didn't even know who the hell I was, right? And so with that being said, I hope you guys got some value from this. Um, stay tuned. I have another video up tomorrow. I love you guys. Rock out. Believe in yourself. Um, keep on going. Affirm who you are. And when I say affirmations, I mean, I'm talking about telling yourself constantly, okay? I am beautiful. I am magnificent. I am love. I am peace, okay? I am enough. I am worthy. I am confident. Abundance is my birthright. I mean, you got to look down and, and look back up with, with some sass to it, okay? All right? And with that being said, I love you guys.